You're muted. How's it going, folks? Uh, I almost died on my way over here. As you guys noticed, if you were here earlier, I'm not wearing my Marlon Humphrey jersey because it is raining in friggin' Arizona. I nearly died. Uh, I do have a Lamar Jackson story to tell you. So I'm just sitting in class, and all of a sudden, I had the urge. I had the Paul Pierce urge, the Lamar Jackson urge. It was not fun. Um, and then uh, leaving class, I actually uh, stepped on this metal, like, piece like this metal piece this piece of metal and uh almost went sliding uh so a uh, shout out to me not dying uh how are you guys doing not bad it's a good day in florida can't really complain had a little fun with the stream show the entire day so that's always good yeah this is uh this is pretty exciting what we got going on here 12 hours straight <laughs> yeah i am uh super excited you know i originally had the 24 hour live stream and then henry took took it off and ran with it so shout out to henry uh i don't i, I wasn't watching much of the jets so jets show so if, if they didn't shout out henry henry you're the goat so um yeah we have some huge giveaways too so you can uh check them out on the link tree uh we have things like a cameron jordan jersey um not signed though uh, we have a justin fields signed mini helmet we also have a uh jace horn yeah jace AC Horn. Oh, that that one's gonna be nice. And then a um, is it Michael Charles Parsons? Leno. Right, Michael Parsons. Yep. Ah, and, <clears throat> okay. And uh, also, Charles Leno is joining us in about an hour and a half, an hour and forty five minutes. Um, also, we have a mock, a mock draft open. You can apply for ten dollars, and all again, all proceeds go to Hurricane Relief uh, down in New Orleans. Everything goes to the Red Cross. Um, so you pay $10, you get a spot in our mock draft. That'll go live at 8 p.m. I, I believe it's 8 p.m. Yes. Uh, I'm kind of all over the place. So what a time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's jump right into it. Uh, I have for totally forgot what the first topic of today is, but that's okay because that's why Jack's here. <laughs> yeah, it's Mac Jones. And I'm, I mean, people have been talking about it all day long, but uh, Mac Jones, not only – was Mac Jones named the starter in New England? He was done so because Cam Newton was cut. Yeah, was that cut. Was, that was pretty jarring to that see. Was, I was walking. Uh, uh, I was walking back. Uh, I went to Dunkin' Donuts early this morning, right? And I was walking back into my dorm, and I looked at my phone, and I saw Cam released. I'm like, I act like verbally said what? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I was so, like, uh, I was yeah, like, that was, I was passing like, me was like, what are you doing? But okay. looking at it, like, am, am I reading this right? Did they just cut Cam Newton? Like what? Like, first you called this one though. I think. I. Yes, he did. I'm not so okay. I'm not mad. I'm just annoyed about it because I like I like Cam. Like I said, I wasn't trashing him, but I knew Mac Jones would be the guy. I just had that feeling, you know, just you can't you can't do the numbers that he or put up the numbers he does and not start. And, of course, I also heard that the whole vaccine kind of played maybe a role into the whole thing also because he was unvaccinated, so it was probably easier for just to let him go. But, hey, I will take that credit for that Mac Jones one. Let's just hope now that I said it, he can do me right and make me look good going forward and not have a bad season. So Yeah, uh, he was the uh, highest rated rookie <clears throat> in uh, offensively, um, according to PFF. Uh, also, shout out defensively, uh, Quiddy Pay was the highest rated rookie defensive player. So Mac and Quiddy Pay, and I, if I remember correctly, on draft night or maybe the the show we did after the draft, Bree went out and said that the best pick of the draft was Quiddy Pay. So shout out, shout out to Bree for nailing that, and shout out to Bree for having a new starting quarterback today. Yes, well, I was like waiting for her to come in and say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd, be, that'd be too funny. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that organized. I don't have like a clip of her talking. So, um, I'm. I'm excited. I know I've said in the past that I wanted Cam to start, and I. I think this is. This is. In general, I think it's good for New England. I, I know I've said that you have a really high floor with Cam, and you don't have quite the same floor with Mac, but you probably have a higher ceiling. Um, for fantasy purposes, with Damian Harris, I think the volume increases a lot, but I think the efficiency goes down because there's Max not a rushing threat. So you don't have a Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, 11 on 11 situation. It's going to be Mac hands him the football 10 on 11. No one cares about Mac. And even if you did, he's not, he's, he's not pulling a, uh, oh, it's like a boot, a naked boot out and screwing you over. Like 
okay, cool. Like no, he's not doing that. Cam could, you know, Lamar does, Kyler does, Fields and Lance will when they inevitably start. But Mac Jones in New England, congratulations, buddy. Can't wait to see it. I just hope that he does what he does in like the preseason. Like I said, from the beginning, he, he just looked poised to have the position. He looked like he knew what he was doing in the pocket. So if he can translate that to first string starters. We have a, I guess, breaking news. Uh, Texans waived uh, wide receiver Kiki QT, uh, one of my favorite players in the league. Top wow. tier name as well. So that's, he's a nice receiver. You know, I know he hasn't had like this, the opportunity to be great, but in 2018, uh, like weeks, I don't know, 14 to 17. And then the playoff game, he was one of the most heavily targeted players in the league. So he's a guy that has had some of that production, you know, so it, it is a bummer. You know, this is, it, it's a great day for a lot of players. It's a, it's a bad day for a lot of players. And as a fan, um, it does kind of suck when you see, hear these guys that some I've never heard of some like the Kiki's of the world, the cams of the world. It's just like, well, darn, I, I wanted to see them play football this year. And of course they still can, this might be a, a Houston maneuvering his contract. Um, so something like what uh, the Patriots are likely to do with Hoyer or the Vikings might do with Griffin, Everson Griffin. They might just move that money around a little bit. So, I mean, you kind of get that feeling a lot, though, in the preseason. Like there's a lot of guys like those fringe players kind of as well um, who just like you, you feel bad for them. Like they're working their butts off. They, they've gotten, they've come, been through a lot to get their opportunity. But uh, you know, it's just how it goes. Sometimes, sometimes the team can't make it work. Sometimes the fit just isn't there. So sure. you know, yeah, that feeling kind of you get that a lot about a lot of people. Yeah. So I honestly of feel now, like oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I feel like uh, for this one though, for Kiki QT, it's not really the worst thing because it's like we know Houston's already trying to clean house for what they can. So maybe it's like, you know what, like, let this guy out of here. He's good enough to maybe go to another team, be a receiver three. You never know. So it might be another opportunity for him to be somewhere good. Yeah, uh, uh, so there's tons of ways I can transition to this. Transi- tra- yeah. Wow, <laughs> if I could talk. There are tons of ways that I could transition this into a Deshaun Watson conversation. So, hey, he guess who K- Kiki QT was catching passes from? Oh, yeah, Mr. Deshaun Watson. Uh, as of right now, he is staying in Houston. Houston has zero plans of trading him. There seem to be some like last minute push to. There, okay, let me, let me dispel a myth. There is no last minute. It's there's no deadline to trade Deshaun Watson. It's just increasingly unlikely as we d- get closer and closer to the season. So it there there was no four o'clock deadline today to trade Watson. The four o'clock deadline uh, for Eastern deadline was for cuts, right? So. Um, Watson is going to be a Texan. He is unlikely to play with the Texans. So I think they're on the hook for about $10 million this year. So that's, you're paying your superstar quarterback $10 million to not play for you. How do we feel about that? That's kind of like the, the angels, uh, paying Albert Pujols to hit home runs for the Dodgers. <laughs> It's what I can think of, at least. I know baseball is a different sport. It works differently there a little bit. But, uh, I, we didn't mention it. Uh, my my Braves are playing uh, Jack's Dodgers, and I want to jump off a bridge. <laughs> oh, yeah, Dodgers yes, won, Giants lost. Was, was all yesterday was so painful. I I turned it on. You know, Dansby shatters his bat, single. It's like, okay, we, we have a shot. You know, Duvall has been awesome. We have a shot. And then Duvall works at 3-0. It's like, okay, we, we're – it's a it's an un it's a in, unintentional intentional walk right so you don't want to just send him over to first but you don't want to pitch to him because the next guy is Stephen Vogt and I I think I might hit better than Stephen Vogt at this point and at least I would take the first pitch Vogt I don't think will do that and then Duval strikes out on ball four <clears throat> actually no he didn't strike he he swung at ball four to get the I think the second maybe the yeah, the second strike, and then the third strike was just a gnarly pitch from Trinan, that like a, a front door, a front door breaking ball, like that you have no business doing anything with that. And then Stephen Vogt lined out to Bellinger in center, so bummer. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, back to back to Mr. Deshaun Watson. I, I, you have no choice. It's weird. It's it's one of the most unique circumstances in NFL history that. You have a guy that <clears throat> would be taken in the first round. If, if you're doing like an all-time talent draft, right, 
Deshaun Watson's a first round pick, un- unequivocally a first round pick. I I know he doesn't have the accolades and the stats and all this and that and the other, like some guys do, right? So, but I I would the traits wise, how many guys are you taking over? Like Mahomes, Allen, I would argue Kyler, that he might be a top ten pick. So he's one of the most talented quarterbacks ever, and he had an all time great season. I was arguing earlier that he was the second best quarterback in football well last like, year oh hands down on the worst team and he dragged yeah. that team to how many how many ever wins they had was solely on what deshaun watson did with his arm and his like 100 yeah, he, he 40 100 yards and they would have had was six it? wins if they didn't fumble against the colts twice. Exactly. like come on now <sighs> oh that was just, just a weird sort of situation i can't speak that's okay so i get it from Houston's perspective, I get it from Watson's perspective, but it just sucks. You know, it, it sucks that we have to have real life consequences, whether it's injuries with Adam JK Dobbins or Cam Akers, or and then we have off the field stuff. And then, like, if Watson, I, obviously, I'm not in Watson's shoes, so I can't make blanket assumptions, but it would be nice to see Deshaun Watson play football this year. That That's what, as a fan, I want to see Deshaun Watson play football. Yeah, as a football fan, you definitely want to see him play. Um, you know, you know, regardless of all, I don't think we'll get too deep into like the whole like legal situation no, going on there or whatever. Hands but off. Uh, hands off. Yeah, hands off for sure. But um, you know, <laughs> as, a, as a football fan, he is one of the best to play the game right now, and you definitely miss his presence. Um, Houston fans, he's doing it with nothing. He has nothing to do with this. With I know, him. like. Oh, he Cooks well, he's, right, right. But for 48, Cooks, I guess, yeah, 4,800 but. yards with basically a suspended <laughs> Will Fuller Cooks. Like, where, like, where did it all come from? Uh, yeah, I, that's that's one of the great mysteries. I'll <laughs> like, have to do a like one of my deep dives, like uh, asynchronous content that Frankie hates. I can do like, how did Deshaun Watson throw for 4,800 yards? Oh man! Hey, Miami, right. pick up the phone and get this guy ASAP. <laughs> Ooh, I think two is going to be okay this year. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's me being friends with Justin and Connor, or if it's like I actually believe in two. I think I actually believe in Tua. Um, so I, I, if I'm Miami, I don't I don't trade for Deshaun Watson. I I get why you might, but I think you have something in Tua. And if you screw it up, guess what? You have ten million kabazillion first round picks anyway. So you can draft a quarterback next year if Tua sucks that badly. You know you can draft. Heck, heck the the Eagles didn't even really plan on Jalen Hurts being the full-time starter. They just – and Wentz just had one of the worst seasons. Actually, I had a stat the other day. Uh, there have been 753 quarterbacks that have thrown 300 passes in a season. Uh, Carson Wentz ranked 749th in uh, net uh, adjusted net yards per attempt, uh, adjusted the league average. Wow. That sounds uh, – we're talking Deshaun yeah. Kaiser is last in that list. So he was Deshaun Kaiser. That's a name Kaiser I haven't heard bad. in a while. Yeah, he was Deshaun Kaiser bad. Like, I, <laughs> 2017 MVP, notwithstanding, he was Deshaun Kaiser bad. I, I don't – Deshaun Kaiser bad. That That's Carson Wentz right now. As of as far as I'm concerned, this is why we're all on the Jacob Beeson hype train, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all so. aboard week one. <laughs> shoot, shoot. Shoot, shoot. Yeah. I'm actually excited Thank for that. Speaking of Choo Choo, we have a, a running back trade. Oh, uh, yeah. Jack, your your boys went out and got Sony Michelle, a, a guy, of course, that won the Super Bowl against the Rams, ironically enough. Ironically sorry enough. Up, sorry. To um, I think, I think, uh, but how do we feel? I think Aaron Donald uh, was asked about the trade and they asked him about Super Bowl 53 and he said he didn't want to talk about it. So. Accurate. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, but I like this trade. I think it's uh, it's solid because you get a guy with – it's a good veteran presence, I think, with Sony Michelle. He comes in and he fills the hole for at least a year with Cam Akers. I don't know what Michelle's contract is right now. I don't know if he's in a contract year or not. Uh, he was, what, a 2018 draft pick, so this should, should be his last year. Be. And I don't, okay. I don't think they accepted his fifth-year option, right? Not yet, no. Okay. And no, they, I don't think they did. I would have probably heard about it if the Rams did, but uh, That's a good one year deal. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's solid for you. Bring him in for a year. You can fill the hole with Cam Akers out. You you get that veteran presence, and he can produce too. I thought he was doing some pretty solid things for New England the last few years, and I think that he could fit pretty well into it. It, it adds on to the run game in Sean McVay's offense. I feel because right. this this was something that we thought maybe would be. Um, 
I, I can't think of a good word for this, but like dropping off, I guess, in terms of like the without Rams. acres or without like a, an elite without, running back like Todd Gurley. Without acres, I feel like it becomes more of a passing offense than a running offense. Now mm-hmm. I feel like there's some more balance to it. I would say I still love Daryl Henderson. Mm-hmm. Jake Funk is going to be RB three. I love Jake Funk. I thought he did yeah, great in the preseason. He he actually earned the last week off. Sean McVay gave him the last week off. Told him he cemented a spot. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, I love to see that. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm excited about this running back situation. I really am. I think it's a. Uh, I know it's just probably going to be for a year, but I think these guys can produce some good yards for the Rams this year. I'm, I'm interested that you say the Rams are going to be more pass centric because I know the, the game that will always stick out to me with McVay and the Rams in general was going down 25 to Buffalo and they had an, a run pass split that was even the rest of the game. And of all the circumstances that you could have a fully pass heavy offense, McVay said, Nope, we're going to run the football. Now, part of that is because Buffalo wants you to run the football. This is what happened with Baltimore in the playoffs. This is what happened with the Colts in the playoffs. But it, I don't. I think McVay knows that the running game has a lot of value, especially when he schemes it up so well. And regardless of who's carrying the ball, whether it's Henderson, hopefully Henderson. I I drafted Henderson in several. several it's weeks. it's more than likely going to be Daryl Henderson. Yeah, um, so he's definitely he's, he's, Henderson. I'm I'm fully expecting him to be the lead back. I'm just saying without Acres, I feel like that's the direction the offense was trending in this year. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. What say you, Mister Stefan? Uh, I was a I was a Sun himself fan back in the New England days. He did have that great playoff run where he had I think was it almost eight nine touchdowns or it was like eight rushing touchdowns or something like the span of the games. So he's still young. He had kind of an injury plague season his last year, so that's why they kind of had to ship him out. Honestly, I can see him running for at least six to maybe 800 yards rushing for the Rams. I think him and Henderson can easily coexist. Henderson, I see as more – he rushes, but more of a receiving back. And I see as Michelle being kind of like the guy they give it to at first down for like four or five yards. That's good. But I see them both coexisting pretty good. As Fantasy-wise, I'm going to go with Michelle in the later round if I would take him. I wouldn't take Henderson so early still, but it's a good situation to have. And if I was Jack, I'd be – moderately okay with the replacement of cam makers with these two guys and jake yeah, Funk, for sure for sure and be- before we transition into our next seg- segment i want to shout out my boy jake donated ten dollars so much appreciated man also we need to do a calf show on the U stadium network uh jake's actually been been on the app for about six years same long the same length as i have so shout out to my fellow Cavs fan jake ready jack do we have a yeah thumbs up thumbs down yeah give me a moment i'm just uh i need i might need you to turn the screen on and off for me but uh okay let me get it i got got my thumbs ready today yeah i do too um so we're gonna be looking at all we're gonna be kind of going down through the off season we are at least splash and i are pretty i'm pretty sure stefan is too i'm not 100 but we're pretty big on uniforms we're pretty big geeks that whole sort of thing uh we're gonna be looking at all the new ones for 2021 uh, this upcoming year, some of them throwbacks, some of them uh, alternates. We we don't know. Um, we'll see. But uh, yeah, we're ready. Yeah. I won't be able to see your reactions though, so just let me know. What you say. Just okay. say it when you get. Just throw it up. Throw it up. Let's go. All right, we got the Niners here. All right. All right. So these are I think these are like legit throwbacks, seventy-five year anniversary, and um, that is, uh, I believe, Jerry Rice. Yeah, it is Jimmy and Jerry. Um, we got we got Kittle, of course, tight end one. I don't know. I, I don't like the font on the numbers. Like I, I like the red. I like the red and white together. I just I don't I'm not a big fan of the black outline of the numbers. Yeah, that drop shadow has always been weird. That's been on there on their throwbacks before. Um, I feel like that's a bit of a. It, it's interesting. I think maybe if it was like just an outline or if it was maybe the the tan color they use i guess that'd be okay i don't know how readable that'd be actually yeah i, I don't know i i think there's ways to improve it uh i would imagine we have some better jerseys coming so I, i'm gonna say a thumbs down on this one i think i'm gonna stick my thumbs up it's not like the because i feel like this will be the worst jersey i see so okay that's fair. I'm, I'm i'm not saying it's the worst i'm just saying it i think it's no. a little underwhelming like yeah, i wouldn't want to wear this one. in madden 
if that makes sense. As, that's my as, criteria. As, if, if I if I would I wear it, if, your Madden is your criteria. All right. <laughs> I love it. Though. I love it though. It's right because that's the only time we get to actually choose what yeah, we want to exactly. wear. Because you got to hope that these teams over here just pick what we want to wear, like on exactly. the NFL. So, so sure. the next one. Let's go to the the other throw. I guess I don't really want to call it the other end of the throwback spectrum, but it is a throwback. But it's also modern throwback, is what the Rams are calling it. This gets two thumbs up from me. What do you about you guys? What about the bone? What like what? Why are you? The just bone is not good. Bone? The what? bone is not I, good. I almost impulse bought a Van Jeff like the day Van Jefferson got drafted. I almost impulse bought a Van Jefferson jersey and bone. So I don't want to hear any bone slander today. Uh, these are clean, it. though. I, I would wear these. Yeah. In Madden. Give me a thumbs up. My first game at Madden 22, I threw these things on. This is what the bones should have been, is what I'm saying. Uh, no, no, no. Yes. You don't though, yes. Bone. At least these jerseys are better than last, was it last year or two years ago. Almost like, almost like the transition to these new ones. Last year. Okay, yeah. These are way better than the ones from last year. So he's you're just in the bone too, then. I don't know. Yeah, because like, but I, you know, my Dude. I like the old school Rams jersey, it's like old, like the old like navy blue and uh, gold. That's still my favorite one. I'm not sure how I feel about those. Anyway, that's those are the modern throwbacks for the Rams, is what they're calling it. Giants, the, not completely new here. I think the more the, this graphic shows their full set. They do have new white pants this year, and they have this. Uh, 10th anniversary Super Bowl. What number is that? 40, 46. 46. Yeah. Throwback. Uh, what do we think? <laughs> Ooh, Mike just roasted your Rams, buddy. I'm sorry. What, what do you say? Quote, I, I'm sorry. Rams have one of the worst uniforms in the NFL. <laughs> he's quote, He's thinking about the wrong LA team. Anyway. <laughs> ah, boom, roasted. <laughs> I really like what the Giants do here. I like when I remember I was like in third grade. I got like a, uh, like a pin. Like a like a pin that you put in your shirt, like a it was a I got a Ravens one and I got a New York Giants one because those were the only NFL teams she, uh, our technology teacher had, and I liked how she implemented some of the red because I think red is an under I don't like the color red usually, but I think the Giants do it very well. I like the, the numbers color, yeah. on the Jones jersey, the numbers on the I would imagine that's Blake Martinez jersey. Like the socks, the stripes on the pants, beautiful, and the, the helmet stripe down the down the center. Uh, I love it all the way around. Um, yeah, I, I have nothing to complain about. These are good. Double, I would say double thumbs up. Oh, and ooh, Mike is back. He says, "Quote: Chargers got one of the best." IMO. That's I your do opinion. Like those, I do like those like powder blues though. I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, I love them. I, I could I, rant I would, about I, those all day. I could have like five Chargers jerseys and be okay. I could rant about those all day. Anyway, before <laughs> I get before I get too deep into it, uh, Stephen, what it. do you think of these? They're the same jerseys we've seen for the last ten years. <laughs> it's just I mean the new one. The, the, no, no, I know. Like it, it, it's all to be honestly. It's like it's like Madden. It's the same thing. They just change every little thing every year and make it yeah. Little- I mean, I'm not a big fan as like I'm not wowed. I'm not like I like the blue one, the color rush one. So they're nice. That one, that's my favorite one. But I'm not too amazed. You know, it's not like a like the last one with the flow. yeah. Like we said, it's not like a drastic change. It is yeah. somewhat new, so I put it on the list. But uh, and the white pants are new as well. I believe. I don't know whether that's. What I like an all there, white but... crisp fit. Like when I play men, like I said, I always try to do like an all white uniform with white socks, everything. So the color one looks pretty good. All right, yeah, uh, let's move on. We've we got the Packers. Do- Okay, I have an idea. At some point uh, during the season, we need to do a tier ranking of color rush jerseys. Okay. Yes. That'd be I'm exciting. Not... There are some teams where I'm not sure what qualifies as their color rush. Um, Good point. These look like they just... could be color rush. It asks... mm-hmm. They, okay, they kind of have that feel You know what them, throws but... these off for me? It's the. It looks like mesh. I don't know if it's just the camera, but it, it looks does. like mesh. Like it you does. Can, I you see can see too. like the shoulder pads. I, like, I'm not a fan. Like, like I know. Yeah. Like I have a, like my Eric Weddle jersey is like officially a practice jersey or like a I think uh, NFL the... equipment jersey. So it's like a little goofy. Um, or I had an old Peyton Manning jersey that felt like just, it was just not, not see through, but it was kind of like the, like this, like it's, Kind of like mesh, like a penny you'd wear in soccer practice. And I'm, I like the color scheme, but I don't like how you don't like the material. Yeah, like yeah, like I think the Packers are like one of the only teams. 
maybe the only team actually that like had they when Nike switched the uniform template, they opted to stay with the with this style of mesh and whatever. Yeah, I'll pass. that's a little strange, but in terms of the color, I think it's fine. Like, yeah, the, it's not the something I'd wear. Good. You know, I like the, the gold. Co- and in the, terms of the, the design, yellow, like the colors, the green. They should have put the GB on the helmets, though. I feel like, like the GB, how like the initials are. They should have slapped those on the side of the helmets. It, it's like they just took all the decals off their helmets, yeah. like their normal helmets, and then just. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I I went to a school that was green and gold, like. We had nice uniforms, but this to me just I can't I can't I'm like staring at it to like light it, like, <laughs> trying to like yeah. <laughs> I like the idea yeah. I'll say that yeah like the, the idea, idea. is cl- uh, clown the idea is clean it's just I not executed super well if it was a solid green I'd probably dig it yeah. Yeah. it's just a, it just comes down to the material uh anyway Colts this is a throwback what do we think I, I do I, I mean it, it's I, I what do you want like <laughs> like it's I don't – if I saw – so my boy Tyler is a Colts fan, right? If I saw him wearing this jersey compared to the normal Colts jersey, I don't think I'd be able to tell a difference. Exactly. That's yeah. And it's when you're right. watching, like, TV, you're like, we're like, oh, that's a color rush jersey. Yeah, wait, really? I thought they were just the regular ones from, like, yeah, exactly. a few farther away. Yeah. So, I, I mean, feel like a lot of these are just, like, helmet differences or something. It's it's – New it's for really this subtle. year, which is why it's on the list, but it's really subtle. Like you, like, you can barely tell. But it, I, I think the Colts are one of those teams that have had the same thing for a long time. It sucks it's to be like those timeless. teams like that. Like it's have like sort of timeless. It's like yeah. what the Red Wings are in hockey that you're not going to really screw with red and white. So yeah, the you're Colts gonna aren't really going to screw with the blue. Montreal Canadiens. They've had pretty much the same. At least for they a have three time. colors. Yeah, that's yeah, that's harder when you have only two. When you limit yourself to only two colors, it's tell a me little... about it. We went we went off on our terrible Red Wings retro reverse jerseys <laughs> six months ago. Let's let's not talk about those practice jerseys. <laughs> oh, need to vomit real quick. Um, last one, Bengals. They they I believe they're the only ones on this list. This is a full like rebrand. These are their yeah. brand new primary yep. home yep. away alternates. Yep. What do we think? Like the, the white looks so crisp. Yeah, I'm giving it, it a looks thumbs nice up. Nice on the field too from the the preseason game. It, it looked really good. Um, it looks really good when Jamar Chase is dropping passes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I like- Jamar Chase is going to be awesome. Don't don't misconstrue that. He's going to be awesome. It's just rookie jitters. It happens. You know, uh, not. It's also you being. It. It's also you being a Ravens fan. So you're just taking a jab at them. Uh, well, no, he he does have four drops. He had, was I think five targets, one catch, four drops. I'm not saying he didn't drop it. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he's going to be awesome. I, I have no doubt he's going to roast our secondary for 250 yards one day. So hate I hate to see it, but I think it's going to happen. Stefan, I know you're a fan of the all white. I really like this all black and this but, but black that, and orange. Yeah. I'm not hating that. Or- I'm not hating that. Like it's nice because that's it's like you know like the Falcons, the Ravens. Yeah, have those black jerseys. You're like that is so I, yeah. The, you oh, know? Yeah, the all black. Then, oh, some don't, don't, don't get me started on the, the Falcons. Black. The the Falcons with their two tone uniforms. Like <laughs> God, to no. do it on the number is one thing, but to do it on the whole jersey, it's like mm-hmm. yeah. To do it on the number is a Rams sort of thing. The most it's underrated thing. jersey also is the Detroit Lions black jerseys. Ooh, those ones I in a minute. Nice ones. I okay. used to always pick those in Madden when I when they were relevant enough to play with. <laughs> oh, they were. Oh man, <laughs> go for the. Oh my. I love you, Detroit, but come on. <laughs> Stefan came from the upper deck and just. Oh my, that was savage right the there. Top, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway. Um, I think some of the NFL players were dropped as children, like dropped genuinely like straight down onto their skull because i don't know how you can compile a top 100 that is so catastrophic before like, we get into the uh oh. into the uh and do into the top 100 i think we've crossed uh 2400 bucks oh, in the yeah. donations nice it's, it's a nice milestone there yes we got a golf clap thank so you everybody. come on jack clap I did it. There we go. Yeah, we're all stopping. Okay. I did it off camera, but anyway, yeah. Okay, that works. So, yeah, shout out everyone. Um, Again, everything is going to the Red Cross. Um, Those in Los Los Angeles, wow. Uh, Those in the (laughs) other LA, uh, Louisiana, affected by Hurricane uh, Ida. So, Uh, and shout out again to Henry, keeping us updated on the numbers and such, you know, throwing that to donate to Hurricane Ida Relief. Go to the link tree. Um, Much appreciated. 
So do you guys want to jump into preseason cuts or some top 100 talk? Top 100 talk. Let's get top 100. Okay. Um, on. First of all, did you guys see my top 100? Not fully, no. I, I I really hope YouTube doesn't demonetize us for that picture of Aaron Donald. I was oh hoping <laughs> so bad you would use a picture of him training with knives. <laughs> and then, apparently they're fake knives, but they, they still hurt when you get whacked with them. But well, of course. I mean, knives. you're whacking someone with a knife. Like, it's not Good expected point. to, like, be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, um, Aaron Donald was not number one in the NFL top 100. I don't know what kind of crack um, the players were on there. Stay um, off the weed. The weed. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Stephen A. Smith. So I, there were just some goofy placements. I thought I, – I think I had like 48 – so Frankie sent me like the top 50, right? And I think I had 48 of those 50 It's some somewhere in my list. The only two that I didn't were Darius Leonard, obvious, and Devin White, obvious. Those are two guys that I'm very outspoken that I think they're a little overrated. Um, other than that, I think it was a very clean, like everyone in their list I had in mind to some degree, even if it was like, I don't know, 92, like Tom Brady. But with that said, huh? if you had to rake it, rake it, rank it one to 10, do you, you like it? Was it overall a good list? Was it overall? Like, I don't know. Cause I, I have like a different level of respect for like, say Justin that went out and did his top 100 or even PFF when they do their top 100 players, like, they, you know, go through that or an individual goes through that. And I have respect for that. But this player list, I understand that the players know more about football than I do, but also realize the players have friends in their lives, exactly. friends on the teams, right? Like if you're, I don't know, if you're TJ Hawkinson, why not vote for DeAndre Swift, you know, or why not vote for your college teammate Noah Fan, you know, or if you're Patrick Mahomes, why not vote for, Eric Fisher. What, and, well, what person on the Rams roster is not going to pick Aaron Donald as number one? Maybe well, Jalen Ramsey. Human's not going to pick Aaron Donald. Jalen Ramsey. He'll pick himself probably. But Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't understand him. Actually, he might pick Aaron Donald too. I don't know. I don't know. Donald, so. what, if you, what if you asked him? I, I, he, he, he probably he's, turned he's it into some guy. diss against Darnell Mooney. I know, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But he's he's oh, a man. team guy. So I feel, one, I, feel like, I feel like. Can you guys believe would, uh, that uh, we are. Uh, uh, just nine days away from the regular season. Oh, it's ridiculous. Nine days away. This off season from Dallas beating Tampa Bay. It hey, really, hey, 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 come on. It really feels like the off season's flown or not flown by, but has uh, the opposite of that. Actually, it's, it's gone by it's about as fast as a snail. So, so I, I'm I'm really I'm really excited for football to be back. It, I I feel a hole missing within me. It's a pretty big hole too. A it's void like a, within our hearts. You have to yeah. wait for Monday, those flash. You can't. You know, you can enjoy the Sunday. I, I know, but I get that Thursday but when I, but when I'm doing you stadium work on Sunday, I don't have to worry about what Lamar Jackson's doing because I can just yeah. sit back and wait for Monday and see him drop 300 yards and four tutties against the Raiders. Am I wrong or am I right? I've got the Thursday game. Jack's got the Sunday night game, and Splash has got the Monday night game. Prime time. Correct. So we've got three of the games in three prime times. Yeah, I, I would argue that uh, Cleveland and Kansas City should be one of those games, but I understand SoFi with fans is important. Tampa Bay, duh, they just won the friggin' Super Bowl. They've had fans and, too. Um, huh? Tampa's had fans this year, this past yeah, year. We do things oh. different down here. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and uh, first time fans at Allegiant. I okay. Pause for a moment. Allegiant Stadium, what are you doing with your ticket prices, dog? I am a college student, and I want to go up to Vegas, and it would be cheaper to, cheaper for me to fly to Vegas, back to Tucson, 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 and to Vegas, back to Tucson, than to get into the freaking stadium. Are you serious? That's six round-trip flights if you can't count. Ah! I mean, I kind of, I have to come six. That's Baker. That's a Baker Mayfield. That's a Baker's Mayfield of flights, actually two and from flights. Are you yeah. kidding me, dog? Are, are you actual? I, I don't know. Else I have to complain about too. Have you guys seen the pictures that came out about SoFi Stadium's food? Oh, goodness. I was at a club, like a club now. Like, yeah, they have a 
field level club. That's way too expensive. And no one who is How a do you like afford is all this stuff. That. Bro, like, like, let's go to a football game. No, let's go to the club and set at the football Someone game. That- <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna have time to like bring up actual pictures of the food, but somebody mentioned like when the Rams made a statement saying that like, oh, you have to wear your masks unless you're actively eating or drinking. Yeah. Somebody made a, a comment on Twitter saying, if you have you've seen if you've seen the food here, no one's gonna be everyone's gonna be wearing their masks all the time. <laughs> oh, oh, roasted from the top shelf. Oh my! At least you like Atlanta, and you up, you had a Chick Fil A, and you can't even serve them on Sunday. Oh goodness! I have, as, is- <laughs> as a diehard Braves fan, going to games on Sundays, I I just want to leap off from the the top of the the outfield fence. Scaffolding. Just, yeah, just should we move back to the top one hundred? <laughs> Yeah, top one hundred things to that make 100. Uh, top one hundred things that annoy Splash. <laughs> That's what <laughs> this be, has become. That'd be, a, uh, that'd be a pretty fun list. Uh, so, um, so Jack, one to ten, how would you rate it? How would you rank, rate the top one hundred? Out of ten, uh, I'm, I would go with a six, probably. I liked okay. a good chunk of the list. I think some players were, I think they were like lower only because of injury. Guys like CMC or, mm-hmm. uh, um. Your guy, well, Ronnie Stanley, wasn't on the list, and like I understand, but Ronnie was Stanley on wasn't on the list. Come on now, Cooper Cup wasn't on the list. I don't think Cup right. made as huge of an impact last year, though. But so, isn't it going right. into the season that it, it's isn't it like top 100 players going into 2021? Yeah, something like that, so, like, which is be there. Right? I feel I like know, Cup should weird. have been like bottom 10 at least. I don't know. I Cup moment. wasn't in mine, and he wasn't. Okay, first of all, there are a lot of good wide receivers, and no disrespect to Woods or Cup, but to me, when I think of Cup and Woods, I think of them more as a duo. Follow. They I, yeah, I, I yeah, agree with that. So like, I agree with that. I, I can't tell you which one's better. Like they both do. They're pretty really similar, similar things, honestly. Yeah, they're really similar. They they do like the blocking. They're they're plus blockers. The yards after the catch. They're solid deep threats. They're they you can. Put them on the perimeter. You can put them in the slot. They can do a lot of different things for you. And the, but they are very. It's very much a, <clears throat> like a, a platoon, kind of. Yeah. So like follow follow me to baseball for a moment. So look at the Tampa Bay Rays, or even look at the uh, what's a really obvious example. Uh, oh yeah, Tampa Bay Rays. Um, at f- what first base? Some days you play G Man Choi, you know, and then. Some days you don't play G-Man Choi, right? Some days you play uh, Mike Zunino. Some days you don't play Mike Zunino. Why? Because the pit, the handedness of the pitcher. So it's a you're the sum of the parts is the whole. I, I forget how the saying goes, but Woods and Cup together are better than Woods and Cup separately. And you know, if, if you put, yeah, I can agree. Yeah, if you put Woods and I don't know, OBJ for, I'm just going to use OBJ because I have all of them in the same like tier. If you put Woods and OBJ together, I don't think it works as well as Woods and Cup. And same thing if you put Cups, Cups, Cup and OBJ together, I don't think it works as well. So it, they work awesome together. It's kind of like the Bills, Bills uh, safeties, Poyer and Hyatt, that neither of them are top 10, but as a duo, they're like top three. Yeah. They play, they play well together. And when they play well together, they make each other better. Mm-hmm. For sure. It's not top duos unfortunately though but i feel like both if if you're if you're gonna put one on there you might as well put both on there but again when they're this is an individual player ranking and by themselves i don't really see it as much as i do when they're together um Mm -hmm. now if cup can pull away from say that narrative this year then maybe i put him in the first part of the top 100 but nothing lower than like the 80s you know but that's Mm -hmm. if he has a season that's better than robert woods Mm -hmm. i think my Mm -hmm. issue with the list is more so not the players involved because I think most of them are fine. Like there are some goofy ones. Yeah. Like uh, there's I too agree many with quarterbacks. That. I, I think they're they the players overrate uh, offensive skill positions and probably corners and edge to a certain degree, and they underrate the trenches. Right. So Zach Martin came in the 80s. There was no Ronnie Stanley. Quentin Nelson was like 33. I have issues with all of those. So that's to me that that's the biggest issue that they just totally disregard um, offensive linemen. Like the Browns are the best offensive. Oh line yeah, football. offensive they had three linemen. Three guys are so from one hundred and one to one hundred and ten. They, they had three honorable mentions, but no one in the top one hundred. It's like, 
People really? always talk about respect the linemen, and yet you don't see linemen in the top ten. You'll never see an offensive lineman crack the top ten, I feel like. Even it's ridiculous. Ten. It's so ridiculous. you got to give some love to the O-line. What are you going to yeah. do? These guys are protecting your Mahomes, your Rodgers, like your – your mm-hmm. stars, and you're just not going to. Yeah, put them and like, anywhere? I I own two Lamar Jackson jerseys, and I will say to my deathbed that Ronnie Stanley is a better football player than Lamar Jackson, and Lamar freaking won an MVP. Like I had in my top 100 last year, I had, or I had Stanley at what 15 and Lamar at 27. Lamar won the MVP, and I didn't think he was the best player on the on his darn offense. <laughs> I mean, what so, what do players do? They buy their offensive linemen gifts for protecting their butts. They like, they, they like take them out to steak dinners. Lawn, like John Deere's, like Zeke Elliott did. Wow, like, the things people do for the, the quarterbacks do for their Zeke. offensive linemen just to get on their good side. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's yeah. it's awesome to see that stuff. Linemen are people too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, speaking I think, of uh, getting on the good side, I was uh, I'm going to transition into some preseason cuts i was reading through a twitter oh thread of daniel jeremiah so he used to be a he was the guy that would tell people hey you're cut right he would say hey buddy come with me we're gonna walk to the the, um, the office and you're gonna have to turn in your playbook um there was one guy uh i forget forget his name and he picked the wrong guy Uh-oh. like he walked into the room and like didn't get the name right so he got i don't know gates that's not the right name, but he got Gates, but he was supposed to get Howard. So he, he gets Gates, and they walk up the stairs, and Gates is, like, throwing things and this, that, the other. And he's like, oh, hey, Gates, uh, I didn't mean to pick you. And he went back and cut Howard super awkwardly. And there was one that uh, he had to tr- – a player forgot his playbook at home, right? So – and J- Jeremiah's like, we got to have the playbook, dog. And – uh the player like sprinted out of the building and got in like his muscle car and Daniel Jeremiah got in like a Toyota. I I don't know exactly what the car was, but like a 1994 Toyota that has no business competing with the muscle car. And they like zoom back to the dude's house. The dude goes into his house. uh, The former Ravens receiver goes into his house, fiddles around for five minutes, comes out and chucks the playbook at Jeremiah. (laughs) Where is this stuff on hard knocks? What a story! <laughs> hey, the Ravens were in Hard Knocks in two thousand one, so there is I, that. I, I miss that old school Hard Knocks. Like this new Hard Knocks, I was talking about it. Oh, it just man. seems like it's being played out, and it's not what it used to be. Like I'm like the Browns year. It Ravens. feels like you're searching for for like a drama. drama. Exactly, exactly. Where are my like, cuts? I want to see someone get cut, and like you said, walk with the little notebook. Like, All right, son. Like Corey, Col- was it Corey Coleman? Listen. That went off. Would just went off the deep end with huge. Oh my goodness! Yep. I, I I don't even watch Hard Knocks, and I know that. That season of Hard Knocks was good too because they had all these guys that they we thought we would like, and then they got it caught. And I'm like, oh, this is actually good TV. The yeah. only, do you guys only... remember? Uh, a quick side note: Do you guys remember? Um, is it D? Was it like DJ Giuseppe Johnson? DJ DJ. Uh, the or no, Damon Sheehy Giuseppe. No, it, it was a it was a yes. Sheehy Giuseppe for the Browns. Yes, 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 yes. yes. That that is an I uh, that is an all time story. That <laughs> yeah, actually, a, uh, we want to touch on it quickly. How how do we feel about Mister Mister, the team known as Bishop Sycamore? Oh goodness, <laughs> <laughs> lying to the- ESPN <laughs> to get on national <laughs> TV. <laughs> ESPN will never live this down. The best part was uh, Brett Coleman said after the fact, these people were so dense that they didn't even realize that Bishop Sycamore was short for BS. <laughs> you see the highlight <laughs> tape from that game? Yeah, fifty-eight nothing. Right, they, these kids were getting laid out. Like, and these are kids that every, like graduated in twenty-seven. Last thing was, was like these two teams were on the complete opposite of the spectrum. They had <clears> twenty-one-year-old <throat> kids that grad like juniors in 2017, 2018 that graduated, and they're playing like, like what? Like, I, like IMG. What is <laughs> going on? Uh, <laughs> Oh man, that, it's funny because it's like a ha ha to ESPN, you know. Yeah. It's like, like oh, it's ESPN like, just tripped and smashed their face. To the yeah. Ground with this one. Did he, did that? Um, if you watch the Jake Paul fight, speaking of smashing um, their face. Yep. Oh geez, we're I flying all over the place now. Oh, oh, oh I, I didn't watch it. Oh, I didn't watch it either. Paul. 
Goku yeah, you drink water. Water. I'll say that much. <laughs> <I'll say that. laughs> <Is it>? Wow. <laughs> That's Austin too from the top row. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, okay, so uh, back to preseason cuts. Um, other than Cam Newton, who did you think was the most surprising cut of today? Well, I could go to the Rams again and mention Micah Kaiser was cut. I was a little surprised by that. He's kind of been the, he's kind of been leading the, uh, the inside linebacker position for us for a little while. Um, linebacker has mm-hmm. always been a weak point for the Rams, though, and I feel like maybe they oh, didn't. Uh, okay, I guess a little little sidebar. I was talking to Jake, the guy that donated earlier, right, and I said. Uh, linebackers don't matter in the modern NFL. Just look at the Rams. They could win the Super Bowl, and no one cares about their linebackers. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> like, Listen. I, we, were t- we were talking about the Browns. It's like, who cares? The Browns, I, I don't care if the Browns have bad linebackers. They have a good okay. front, front One of our linebackers is Leonard Floyd, who led the team in sacks last year, I'm pretty sure. If it, was, well, if it wasn't Aaron I, Donald, I mean, it was I'd, I'd, I'd classify him as an edge, but hey, tomatoes, tomatoes, right? Tomatoes, yeah, tomatoes. I guess. Um also, also like uh, Corey Littleton was our linebacker one year in like 2018, 2019. Corey he was Littleton like was he was a linebacker. good player. Then he was good. Like defense. he was the one linebacker you actually saw people talk about. Like he was that good. And then he kind of just they slipped went off. Vegas. He went to Vegas. I'm gonna drink more of this. Um, John, I think Vegas. John Brown was kind of surprised because he asked to get released. So I'm trying to wonder what's going on with that offense. He doesn't like this water. Tastes like. No disrespect to Florida, but so we can, you, you know, like Florida. I don't know. If, I would imagine, Stefan, you've been to Disney at some point in your life, but it it tastes like shower water from Disney. <clears throat> oh boy! Oh. If that, anyway, that before so, we um, get, before we get too deep into that, <laughs> um, one one other. <laughs> One other Rams related thing, by the way, I know, I know I'm sticking with my team a lot here today, but uh, uh, I think something that was talked a lot about on Twitter that I saw today was uh, they actually took the practice field before cuts were announced. So you could see kind of who was there and who wasn't there. Johnny Hecker wow. was there. Corey, Bo- Corey Bajorquez was not there. And it ended up like that was a huge discussion going on because Hecker was on the COVID list. So he didn't really play that much. He played one game in the preseason. Kind of mm-hmm. got outperformed. I'd say Bajorquez had a better uh, week one preseason game than Hecker. Well, um, let's, okay, first off, let's put some respect on Corey Bajorquez's name. He has the same playoff pass rating as Carson Wentz. <sighs> I'm not I'm not trying to diss Bajorquez. I'm saying um, – <sighs> Oh, no, I, I'm, comp- I'm comparing a puncher to a quarterback. That, this is a, a big thing for – uh, Mr. Uh, friggin, what's his name? Uh, for Porkus, that he is, he is better than a, a better he's than a. He's a damn good punter, though. Holy yeah, crap! he is. He was. A he is I really actually good. predicted him to be the second team All Pro last year. That blew I, up because I didn't think the Bills were going to be that awesome offensively. Bang. I honestly really thought he was. I really thought Johnny Hacker was done in LA. I thought his days were over. Wow. He, thought, he thought he was done too. The media is like, <laughs> like yeah, the media you're going to get, get cut. And the reason why is because his contracts. But then the news yeah. breaks that Hecker restructures his contract. So I guess it's more team friendly now. Hecker stays, but Horkaz actually ends up getting traded to the Packers for a late round pick. So I think it was like a game of chicken there. with them. I feel like, honestly, it was like. Who's gonna be first? Wait, wait, what? Oh, I thought that was Nicholas before because I just commented. <laughs> oh uh, shout out to Nick. Uh, I don't care whether Hecker was on the COVID or not. If, if they, they cut, cut Hecker, Hecker, the Rams shouldn't, shouldn't be an organization. Be an organization. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind You're of the mood wrong. here because he's. I think he's our longest tenured player, so he's and been he's around. He's damn good. He's damn good. He's still he great. I think he's still a great player. What four time All Pro? He he and Tucker are like the cream of the crop kicker punter duo yeah. or not duo but you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah um for sure i actually when i woke up woke up this morning i saw oh, a bevy boy. of washington uh we're not going to talk about it <laughs> i saw a bevy of washington football team moves jimmy moreland cut peyton barber cut antonio gandy golden one of my draft crushes in 2020 cut who like that was for three guys that i thought were going to make the roster and i thought were going to be important players you know jimmy moreland's a solid corner <clears throat> Gandy Golden's like a, a really toolsy, like fourth round pick. And then Peyton Barber, you, you know, he thought he was going to be the um, <clears throat> sort of uh, like the goal line back to Antonio Gibson's. The vulture. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think like James White, like Garrett Blunt, kind of, sort of. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's those were that, surprising yeah, to me. Team Raider um, too, I feel like is a big deal. Stefan, Stefan, what move jumped out to you? Um, like I said, the only one I really cared about outside of anything was the John Brown one. Like I said, I I'm honestly wondering if it's just not a good fit for him. Nothing was really like like out there. If Hecker would have got you know cut or something like that, that'd have been another one I was watching. But nothing this year that got me to like on the edge of my seat. Or like, oh no, so. Maybe it's just time for these kind of players to, to go as they're supposed to. Kiki QT I saw as a good way, not really like a he sucks kind of a thing. It's time to go. It's more like a hey, you can leave, go to a better team, do what you need to do. So I'm until I'm like going to see someone with a bigger name, higher tier, like a veteran that could be on the bubble. Right. I won't like, be too surprised. Like Everson Griffin, I thought was a little weird, but yeah, yeah, yeah that one was a little. I was Did you see his tweets as well? That's the kind of got me. Like he was bashing. Oh, like, wait, like, wait was, yeah, he was the one going after customs, right? Yeah, he was like saying all this stuff, and he ends up being bad on the team. I'm like, isn't that kind of awkward now in the meeting room? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like, hey, hey bro, Kirk, I didn't mean, to, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I totally didn't the mean that. <laughs> I was mad. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> it was mad. I swear. So, yeah, shout out to Mike for the number one waiver priority. My voice cracked again when I was like. I totally do. <laughs> hey, it's okay. Uh, All of our voices crack. Yeah. Anyway, that one did surprise me a little bit, though. But I feel like um, I think the U Stadium account tweeted that he was. Uh, it's probably just a procedural thing, and he could end up back on the roster yeah, through the practice yeah. spot. I guess is how that works. So. Yeah, it's the same thing with New England and Hoyer because they're not going to go into the season yeah. with one quarterback. It's like, yeah. Obviously. Imagine if a team did that though. Imagine if that team walked didn't, out with uh, so much swagger that like, what if I think nope. home, like the Chiefs could be the only team to do that. Did it? Was that, it the uh, Bills or injury prone? what? What team has uh, had Zane Gonzalez as their kicker? The Lions. Uh, Cardinals? Yeah, the Lions, I oh, think. No, I, well, the Cardinals had Matt Prater. <laughs> yeah. Wait, now, well, now, okay, nowadays. They One of the, I think it was the Lions that they cut both their kickers, I think. They, yeah, they have no kicker right now, I believe. Oh, <laughs> okay. And hey, they take Jake Verity. Their... Take, Jake, J- take Jake for a seventh-round pick, please. Please, please, please. There please. you go. Joey Sly is out there. I mean, he's not the most accurate one, but I mean, hey. Okay, I, I feel bad for Joey Sly because uh, uh, Ron Rivera 2.0, Matt Rule, that's his name. Uh, Matt Rule would send him out like 68 yard field goals. Like, come on now. No and one's making like, that. Up. It's like, <laughs> what? Like, you what? Expect? And I, I was so mad. I was on the verge of punching my computer when I saw like I got a negative two for him missing a 67 yard field goal. Like, Why would you attempt a 67 yarder? Like, because it's Matt Rule. He wants to sabotage Joey Sly's career. The only, kicker, the only kicker in the league I would trust to make a 67-yard field goal is Tucker. Sebastian. None of them. Tucker's, Tucker's longest is 61. He made it in, in a dome against Detroit. That's his longest? Who is the yeah, record? I mean, Matt Prater. Uh, Prater, 64, uh, 2013. Prater 64. If, you can get, if you can get me old school. That was like a college game, right? No, Denver. No. San Francisco versus yeah, Denver. Denver. Oh, it was. Okay. I thought it was Vegas, or not Vegas. It's, it's, I'm, I'm Googling it. I'm Googling so, it. Because uh, I know there's some, high school, or there's some college guys that have made, like, 67-yard field goals. I see all over, like, the like YouTube of people sitting there kicking 67-yarders. I'm like, how are you doing this? Oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's no and, 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 I, and I know there's, like, <clears> yeah. yeah. But yeah, if you give me a map right over from Denver. Sam, oh, I would trust Sam Sloman to kick it wide left. <laughs> hey, you it's know what? hitting the upright twice. Greg Zerline, oh, when he got cut, he that, hit, that Sloman hit it off the upright and made it in it's a, in the Titans game uh, from Denver versus Tennessee from uh, ah. week 17 this past year. Sloman made, hit it off the upright. remember that one random week that Gostowski was just awful for Tennessee and they still won. And then oh. another week where he had like five <laughs> kicks. I yeah, remember the, that. The next week he had week. Uh, went bonkers against, was it Philly? No, yeah, they, someone, they didn't play but- like that, so that that Gostowski game was week one. He like missed every kick, like chip shots or like winner. short range, and then he makes the game where He's like the dude from in pickup basketball. He did who, that like, perfectly. Misses, he misses everything and then hits a three <laughs> at the last second. The game the winner. Win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. That old guy with oh, the what? headband and the shorts. <laughs> yeah. The the Mister Accessory. That's what we call him, Mister Accessory. Shout out! Shout out to Dude Perfect for that reference. Yeah. Um, wow, I think this is a, the shortest we've ever gone. We've we've only been recording for fifty five minutes. Oh wow! Do we have, do we have, do we have anything else we want to touch on, or or do we want to unveil a, a squash the splash? I mean, squash the splash was technically supposed to be our segment, but have uh, you guys seen I mean, that trend for video? 
Okay, that I want to touch on that really quickly. Like, okay, what's your like ten oh. second, twenty second? Just what do you think of that video? <sighs> okay, I have mixed feelings about it because at a certain point, it's a high schooler, and I don't think your coach should put his hands on a high schooler. I understand from Dilfer's point of view that he's angry getting a point across whatever it may be and the kid's definitely going to forget it hopefully he, i think he, it, like you said he back talked him like on the yeah, at, side at a certain it. point it crossed a line i think i think it was unprofessional by dilfer fair enough what say you um i mean i played football like and i was an offensive lineman so like i was thought i was always taught to respect the coach you know as another person never a disrespect sure. coach so of course sure. if we did our coaches would get mad i mean to me he took him by like the inner pads like this and just like he didn't shove full extent so like if he had like pushed him or like smacked him or something a little bit more than he did i think he was on that line but never actually dipped below it i mean it's not like you want to do that every week it's not like joe judge how you say don't yell at your yeah. players every week go off like, yeah, he did that. I don't think it's the worst thing, but I wouldn't do that going forward now because, again, it, it is someone else's kid. I just feel like if he had done something a little bit more past where he was, it'd be an issue. Personally, I don't think it's that much of an issue from where he was. But Okay. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. I never played football. I, I played soccer and baseball and tennis and one year of basketball. So uh, I, football is probably a little bit different with the – because you have so much padding too, and right, then, right. you know, like you said, he's grabbing the pads. He's not chucking him across the room. So, I I see where you're coming from. I don't know how I would feel like if if I was in practice and my dad saw my coach just shove me out. I I don't know how he would react. Um, I don't know how most parents would react. I would imagine there was parents and for the kid in the clip. I, I can't imagine that was a positive interaction. After yeah, the game, it definitely but, wasn't. I feel I feel like. Though, like, I, I feel like there's a line that that gets crossed when, like, when, like, it, it, like, there's a difference in like a coach disciplining his player versus like a coach just like straight up harassing or, ballistic like, on him. him. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think there's even a uh, a sort of um, uh, like a like Nick Saban would never do that to someone at Bama, right? right? Belichick would right. never do that to a Patriot. Now, granted, those aren't high schoolers, but I would imagine if Saban coached high school or Belichick coached high school, it's it honestly might be more memorable if B Belichick gives you like the side eye than if he rips into you. Well, it's like when uh, Brady and McDaniel's got into it, and like Brady had like the tablet, and he got pissed and like threw the tab, but or like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he's like talking back, like he's. McDaniels is, is chirping at him, and then Brady, it's like this, the Washington game back, mm -hmm. like way back when Gronk's like rookie year, and they're mouthing each other, they're going back and forth, and they're like making it a big thing. Like that right there doesn't cross it, and I'm just like, oh, that's kind of like that's Brady and McDaniels going at it. So, yeah, Whew, yeah I, I just wanted your opinion. I just figured, you know, yeah. I wanted to know what I you guys think. I think it's a fair, a, a fair thing. I, I think Dilfer, he looked you know, he was a line in the right? sand. If there's a line in the sand, I think his toe was on the other side of the line. Like I don't think it's ridiculous, but I don't know how I would feel if I was a parent. And of course, I don't have, I won't have that perspective for quite a while. So, um, yeah. With that said, do we have any any final words on episode thirty four of this? Podcast? All hail Mac Jones. Yeah, <laughs> so well, Aaron Donald trains with knives. I need to make sure that this is actually yeah episode thirty four. Okay, Aaron Donald trains with knives. Everyone. It is knives. technically Everyone episode thirty four. We were um yeah really happy to be part of this stream. Yeah, it's this a, is an amazing thing. We're it's doing a great well. cause too. Yeah. Um. Should I? Oh yeah, Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald trains with knives. And we have one more troll before the regular season starts and before the Thursday game. So don't forget to catch us next Tuesday as well. Stefan, do the knives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great.